Hi golfers, Rob Cheney here from Golf Tech Singapore. Today we're going to discuss putting and specifically we're going to discuss how you can improve your distance control on the greens. When it comes to having better distance control on the greens, I think a lot of golfers misunderstand the factors that influence how far the ball travels. Um, a lot of them understand and accept the concept that the distance or the length of the stroke uh, has an impact on how far the ball will travel, but there's a less well-known fact and, and understanding surrounding the timing of the stroke. Um, that's the time the entire stroke takes, as well as the timing between the different segments of how the backswing and the downswing relate to each other. So we're going to use uh, a metronome in this, in this video to help you understand the concept of timing and to show you how you can set up a practice station that will help your distance control tremendously. So I've gone ahead and downloaded this metronome app onto my phone. Um, if you don't already have one on your phone, I encourage you to go and do the same. It's a free app from the App Store. Once you've done that, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna use it to help us work on our putting timing. So I'm gonna start by using the 90 beats per minute um, setting. That may feel great for you and that timing may feel like it suits you. Some of you will prefer to go a little bit quicker while others will prefer to go slower. That's perfectly okay. There's certainly some room for maneuver in this, in this particular uh, skill. Some people prefer a faster tempo and putt better with faster tempo. Other people putt better with a slower tempo. So when we set up this exercise, what I want you to do is first of all to experiment using different timings to see which one feels best for you. So before I go and hit any putts, I'm just gonna start the metronome. I'm gonna make some practice swings first. So we're gonna set up with the putter at address we're going to start moving the putter after the first beep. Second beep, we're going to hit the backswing coin. And the third beep, we're going to look to hit the follow through coin. So it can be one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Once you've done that a few times, you should begin to get a sense of whether that tempo is comfortable for you or something you can control. As I said before, if it feels too fast or too slow, just adjust the metronome timer to suit and experiment until you get comfortable. Once you've found a timing that you're happy with, we're gonna introduce the ball. So we're gonna start the tempo, uh, the metronome timer again, but this time we're gonna introduce a ball and go ahead and try and hit those key checkpoints uh, on each of the beeps. What you should notice there with some practice is the feeling that the timing of the stroke is becoming more repeatable. But ultimately, if you're matching the tempo and the stroke lengths together, the outcome of your putt should be very, very consistent. The ball should finish extremely close together. Training that timing is the secret to good putting because that timing and that rhythm that you're practicing exists across a whole range of different putt lengths. So although the distance of your putt will always be ever changing on the golf course, the timing and the tempo of your stroke would be the same whether you're hitting a putt three feet or 30 feet. So hopefully that gives you a, an interesting and useful insight into a way that you could be practicing your putting in a very specific manner to help you improve your distance control. Here at Golf Tech, we measure this particular metric uh, with every player that comes in for a putting assessment. Uh, I just wanna show you some of the differences uh, that I see between people who are good putters, who can generally control their speed quite well, and golfers who struggle um, to have any, de any degree of consistency with their distance control on their putting. So we take a look at these first player's uh, data. A couple of things that stand out for me, we're looking here at the overhead view of the putt. So as we look down at the, at, the, at the picture here, the backswing is the putter moving to the right where it says 9.01 degrees. And then the follow through is where the putter has moved to the left 
uh, where it says 9.95 degrees. Uh, but what's really I want to draw your attention to with that um, path of the putter there is the difference in color between green and red. So a green color notifies us of an acceleration where a putter is speeding up and a red would dictate or indicate that the putter is slowing down. Contrary to popular belief, we do not want the putter accelerating excessively at all at impact. The best putters actually are how their putter is slowing down as they're hitting the ball. So when a golfer comes to me with a, a trace that looks like this, where their acceleration continues way beyond impact, that's usually a red flag for me as far as distance control is concerned. Additionally, if we take a little look down here at the timing of the stroke, you'll see a couple of numbers that I want to draw your attention to. 2.8 to 1 is the ratio of the backswing to the downswing. Now, as a rough guide, a good ratio would be around 2.0 to 1, and that means that the backswing takes twice as long as the downswing. Um, in this example, the golfer was having an incredibly slow backswing. The backswing itself took over one second there. You see 1.06 seconds. And then they had to accelerate quite quickly to get back to the ball and this, is, this was part of the root cause of their distance control issues. If we move on now to a more expert putter, we're gonna see some significant differences from the data that I just showed you. So the first of all, let's look at the shape or the trail of the putt in, uh, as far as the acceleration profile is concerned. You'll notice here how the green changes to red right about impact. So there's very little acceleration or deacceleration happening. It's more of a constant putting putter head speed at impact. That is a really good way to putt. Uh, it gives you the most options in terms of being able to control your speed consistently. Liken it, if you will, to a curler pushing a stone down the ice. And as they let go of the stone, they're not pushing it with any degree of acceleration and they're not pulling it back towards them to slow it down. They're getting to a constant rate of acceleration as they release the stone they're trying to have that best possible control over the destination of that stone. It's very similar in putting. You want the putter to be moving at more of a constant speed when you hit the ball to have a better, uh, better chance of having your ball finish where you want it to. And secondly, if we look at the tempo of the expert putter here, you'll notice how it's 2.3 to one. So we're getting a little bit closer to that two to one ratio. There's no perfect ratio, but I think a window of about 1.8 to 1 to 2.4 to 1 is where I see good putters exist. Once you start getting outside of that range, you see very few players able to control their speed with any great degree of consistency. So I hope that helps give you a little bit of an insight into the factors that really control speed on the green, which as I said to you at the beginning, I think are very often misunderstood. There's a drill and an exercise in there for you to have a go at yourself and try and, try and work on. And then there's a few extra bits at the end there to give you some information really about what makes a good putting stroke. What are some of the ingredients that go into people who putt well versus some of the things to look out for if you do struggle controlling your speed on the greens. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you don't already, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to get your putting stroke measured, I recommend heading down to your local golf tech as soon as possible. Until next time, take care, thanks for watching.